Welcome to Farmhouse Fabrics. Uh oh, pause due to poor connection. On <laughs> that's hey not guys. a good way to start, right? Um, it's Friday and it's Gavin Gush. We um, love to come on here and show y'all what's happened this week at Farmhouse. We have some new arrival shoes. Oh, they're so cute. They're super it's cute. From a company called Humble Souls, S O L E S. And uh, we ordered them in anticipation of our photo shoot coming up in about a week, a little over a week. And they're really sweet. We're just giving y'all some behind the scenes. So these are going to be used for a little two and a half year old we have. They're really great quality. Um, these are their Valentine's collection. So they have little hearts on their closed toed shoes. 100% um, leather. Oh yeah, they're, they're nice. They're really nice. And they're not slippery soles, which I kind of like because... The kids won't slip and fall. They have a little, little bit of texture on them. But look how sweet these are. And these have little little hearts on these also. They are super cute. And so this will be for Farron and this will be for June. And um, So another company that we just ordered from. So we've got some hair bows. We don't know if they're actually going to go perfectly together. But when we saw these, we wanted to have some. <laughs> so this they're is very cute. Holy City Bow. And they are out of Charleston, South Carolina. And look how cute their stuff comes, y'all. They had a personal um, a handwritten note, mm -hmm. have some tissue paper. I don't know if this is because we bought like their jam up edition. Like we bought some really beautiful bows. They're, they're gorgeous. So they're like a heavily embroidered. Um, they have a large clip back, which I personally love. Yeah. Um, they do have different color options and you can buy them individually as well. But um, these are so so pretty. Hey, do you like, because you've got girls of all ages, do you like clip backs better than the kind Snaps, of snap yeah, you do? I do. Okay. Yeah. So these are alligator clips, right? Because they've got the little teeth in them. They are super pretty. I'm going to go for an overhead. Yeah. Show them. There we go. Look how cute they are. Some are a little glitzy with a little bit of gold in here and metallic. Others are the heavily embroidered. These are cute. Aren't they so oh, cute? I, like I this. really love them. So they kind of go with our like muted tone shoes, which is it's gonna be fun for the photo shoot. This I'm getting nosy here. This almost looks like it's a ribbon with the edges folded That's over. That's exactly what it looks like. Doesn't it? Yeah. See, I was wondering if they yeah. cut like strips of fabric. Right. Which is actually what led us to some wild um yeah. some wild fabric purchase. Because if you if you think wonder what they're doing with that fabric, yeah, this is the reason because we think you all might like to make some of your own bows, and um, so we like to offer like some princess style fabrics, and I feel like this fits the mold. Um, they are a netting like a really soft um, polyester netting, and they have a really heavily embroidered design on them. The colors are really beautiful. How, how many pretty. inches are these? They look to be like in the 45 world. They're they're not a they're not a 60 inch fabric, but um, look at the colors. They're super pretty and drapey. I love this too. And really, yeah, they're good. Even though they're heavily embroidered, they're not lightweight, which is nice. I'm sorry, they're not heavyweight. Right. They're a, a lighter weight fabric. You could just back it in a ribbon and then tie it, or back it in a in a in a tool mm -hmm. and then and then tie it. I mean, I just feel like anyway. you could just strip it off and you know cut a cut a three inch strip and you probably could actually you know yeah. and, and not even worry about yeah. backing it <clears throat> this is pretty it is they're very different from what kind of are normal but um when you think of the different ways you can use them perfect yeah and it could be could be just a bodice or it could be a skirt with a solid bodice or an all over dress yeah, depending yep. on your occasion yeah that's right like a garden party would be really cute yeah. out of these fabrics yeah so those are a yeah. couple of the newest um, Isn't it crazy? Maybe we'll call them wild things. Yeah, wild thing. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have a good. We don't have a real name for it yet. So. Um, I should start my demo. Yes, that's a so, great idea. So you know we like to wash vintage laces and that type of thing, and we often talk about our retro clean and retro wash. And the retro clean, the active ingredient is sodium perborate. And lots of you know that sodium perborate is a very good active ingredient to use in your um, vintage with vintage laces and garments and things like that. And it will not hurt them. And so, I mean, I, I like to use this is my own concoction. I love this ivory liquid um, made without dyes, classic scent, and um, mixed together. 
to it me, doesn't explode. It That's doesn't, one thing to know. No. <laughs> There's no it, chemical reaction. Right. But it smells good. When your things are getting clean, it smells good. So I mixed up a little a little concoction. So we show y'all before and afters, or we'll show y'all videos of Sally doing these concoctions. But we thought we would show you actually like real time results that yeah. you get from this from this um, treatment. So definitely if you've scored some kind of um, antique garment, maybe at Goodwill or an estate sale, yeah. um, we recommend this product. So what do you have started here? So this is squirt, squirt, squirt of the ivory. And that's like a, an exact <clears throat> measurement. Of dump, squirt. dump, dump of the sodium perborate. <laughs> also exact. And, yep, and then, then I put hot water. I did it about an hour ago, so it's not really hot. But then I found, this is a little, our Sweet Miss Dot so many years ago made this tiny little thing for Emma, who is now 14. <coughs> and um, there is a stain on it. There's like a, a water stain on the on the side and down here in the flounce. It's been oh, lovingly see, worn. Yeah, I can see that big water stain. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to dump that in here and get that all wet. Usually she just does like this. and I do. But she's thinking she don't want to stand up here dripping. That's right. I did bring some extra towels. Hey, look at my water getting, dir getting dirty already. This is really a fun process. I mean, I feel like there's different parts of sewing that each person enjoys, you know, better. But um, this is a fun process that you can just see the results right in front of you. you can. It, it's really fun if it's like an antique garment because I, you don't know that I that know. ivory gorgeous dress comes out. we did comes it with out that. Organdy embroidered. Comes out crazy white. Right. And now this is a poly cotton eyelet type lace we've shown you before. And it's not like really, really dirty, but it's it's vintage. It came from a, a warehouse where they manufactured garments. And it does get cleaner. So I'm going to put that in there. If we get any before pictures. These are, well. <laughs> Y'all take a picture. I did this. Yeah. <laughs> that was my before picture. That was my before picture. So. We're hoping to show the water so that when we show y'all the yeah. water, you'll be able to tell. If I had some really dirty um, laces from estate sales, the water gets mm -hmm. the water gets brown. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's already getting a little bit. So after yeah. it's soaked, usually after the first 24 hours, depending on how dirty your garment is, you need to go ahead and drain out the liquid mm -hmm. and then refresh it. So you're going to do the same concoction again and you're going to and submerge the garments again or laces yeah. or whatever. We keep ours in our kitchen down here in the shop. And every time I walk by, every time I get a cup of coffee, I stir take it. this and I stir mm -hmm. it up and, and kind of agitate it. And so um, anyway. I'm it's a delicate wash for yeah. sure. She says she's used it, um, the retro clean wash, several different items and love the results. Good. Yeah. I've been happy with it too. I, I really like it. See, doesn't that smell good? It does. So we're going to let this sit to the side, and we're going to bring it back out right before we draw for today's winter. And I even have a rinsing pot. Don't you love my pots? Look at this. You know, it's hard to throw anything away. This. If, so we use it until it cracks right here live in front of you. Do you know your... what this is? This is a cake topper from Costco, I imagine. Costco or Sam's. And um, so I'm going to set that aside, and we'll see what happens. On Instagram, we've got Tara of Two Posh Toddlers. Hey. She said, happy Friday, old friend. Oh, to see. nice to see her. Hey, see you've been making some beautiful things for your daughter. Beautiful. We do like watching so, your page. It's yeah, fun. Yeah. Um, okay. A question about okay. It. Terry Brantley says, will it remove yellow age stains? Well, it has for me. It has for me. And sometimes I've soaked things for like a week. And just like Kristen said, I'll go down and I, I might, the next morning I might dump all that water out and rinse my things and refill it with a hot water and a new potion. And um, I mean, there are certain certain stains and who knows what mm -hmm. they are from over time, but even discoloration from it being such an mm -hmm. old fabric, it can reverse that, you know? Yeah. So it's not just that a particular type of, you know ketchup or something you yeah. know is really going to stain it it just depends how right. long it set in if there was any kind of care to to it when it happened I, but i can tell you this on a really really fine fabric like nalona or a, a, a christening gown i mean i wouldn't be that rough with it like take my big old spoon and I, i'd be very gentle swishing it like this and then when i dump it out i, I bring i bring the the fabric up close to me and then tip 
tip the water out and then then fill it with water. I'm careful. And there's not because... lots of like stretching out trying mm-hmm. to see. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's a ginger yeah. process because sometimes the Gingerly. old fabrics. Mm-hmm. If you do this too it hard, you can them apart. Yeah, pulls them apart. Mm-hmm. And so Scarlet says she used it on antique table linens. Oh, oh right. Them out, girl. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good, good idea. You can make a paste, and I've done this before too. You can make a little paste with a little bit of this retro clean and water, and then put it on the hard to get out spots. Mm-hmm. You know, put it the spot. Mm-hmm. Let that it. soak. Yeah, that's by right. Itself. That's yeah. right. And I've done that lots of times. So. We got a couple of uh, hellos from Frosty, Wisconsin, Cheryl, <laughs> and Mary Ann says hello from Ice Covered City of Dallas. Oh, Woo! I've heard that they're going through ice cold. storms. So yeah, that is cold. I just had uh, one of my vendors called from New York and asked me what our what our weather was, and and we're we're kind of like normal right now. We've had some rain, but it's not too cold, and they're supposed to have a wind chill of like 20 below, and so. Um, that's a problem. That's cold. <laughs> that's a problem. Mary Lynch, uh, uh, Rowling. Rowling says it'll be. I'll be seventy tomorrow. How many bags of retro wash would I need to fill my bathtub? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> Happy birthday! So we have received it. It makes us think that you also have received this in your mailbox. It is the 2023. It's the spring issue of Classic Sewing Magazine. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. It's we, beautiful. Y'all, we had a super sneak peek of this garment. We had no idea at the time that it was going to make cover. We're not surprised a bit. This was um, sewn by the very talented Cheryl Clapp. And um, she made the cover of, of this spring issue. Yeah. Um, so this is also the included patterns that you get with this spring issue. So it's the Little Bo Peep diaper set, um, which isn't on the cover, but it's it's just as beautiful. And then you have the Little Bo Peep dress and apron. And so the machine embroidery design is by Kathy Drew Designs. And so, uh, I mean, yesterday I made a mistake on that, but I wanted to correct it today. And Kathy Drew Designs has exquisite embroideries. So sweet, since sweet, sweet, sweet. We're yeah. trying to let y'all have some of these in your hands before we just show you everything that's yeah. in there. So it's not a crazy spoiler. It's kind of hard since, not to be a spoiler. Though. Since you know the cover, we are going to share. Y'all, look how sweet this little baby is. In the little diaper set. I mean, goodness gracious. It is such a precious outfit. So, um, but one thing that we've kept a secret for many months now. It's been hard. Cheryl but gifted us we, with Yes, this. she did. Cheryl gifted this. And we'll go to the overhead on Facebook. We can't do it on Instagram, but we will go with Facebook because you've got to see this close up. So not only did she, oh, she gift us with this behind oh, the scenes, um, we we're, it's not really our gift. This is something that we plan mm-hmm. to collaborate on with Cheryl, um, but it wouldn't be nearly as good if she hadn't given us this. Right. Um, we're going to give this away in two weeks. We're going to have a drawing for all of the materials you need. We haven't decided which, which little outfit we're going with yet, but as you can see, this is, um, one of the, the versions she made up before completing her apron. So this front, this is the apron front and, um, it's completely embroidered. And so we'll, we'll pull all the other parts and pieces to make a kit. And um, so why why she needed two when this one is absolutely perfect, (laughs) I'm not sure. Um, But y'all y'all someone is gonna win this. I can't see that she made a mistake. I mean, there's not one. That's for sure. It's beautiful. Maybe she just wanted to do a trial, but it was so perfect. But Kathy Drew designs, if you haven't ever sewn any of her designs, are exquisite too. And so I love that they collaborated on this and that that um, Cheryl Clapp made the garments. And this is something the quality of it, y'all. It's so pretty that. Um, I'm going to put my name in this pot. I'm going to see if I can win it myself. I'm so excited. I got a lot of comments. So beautiful. Aww. So pretty. So uh, we can keep a secret in case you're wondering. This is this is true. We've, we've, hid, we've hid this from I y'all. I am thinking, Kristen, that when we give this as a kit, we should give the magazine and the pattern too. Yeah. I'm going to put my think? name in. I'm sorry. Y'all are not going to win. <laughs> I'll draw it as well. We're going to let Kristen do the drawing on that yeah. one. Yeah, this is really, really wonderful. So, just jumping all over the place here. Um, something that has just arrived. We have um, 
made sure that we snagged up a few of these because um, we think that this will be a very handy notion for you. So it's called the MyPad Sewing Machine Needle Organizer. And um, this is securely secure, slightly used needles by tape by type and size, excuse me. It's super thick felt, secure, securely holds needles in place. And so the flower pen identifies needles currently in the machine. So um, Sally is feeling like she's gonna be using one of these. You know what? There... <laughs> I want one. I know, <laughs> and a lot of people have ordered this already, but I'm telling you, this is so smart because when I pull my needle out, and let's say I wanna sew, sew a knit, well then I have to, um, I have to do it, put it, I put a knit needle in and I take my, let's say my size 10 needle out and uh, where am I going to put that that I'm going to remember? And so I'm going to show. you going to see the little stuff on it. So. Yeah, that's right. It's really hard, especially for me these days, really hard for me to see those tiny little numbers and the color. And this way you can put your needle in the right slot. This is a revised edition, which actually includes almost every single needle type they offer. That's neat. And um, which I don't know if y'all know, Schmetz has a color coordinating um, system that they use. Mm -hmm. So if the top of your needle is red, it's for embroidery. If it's white, white for hem stitch and they go through and they have different colors that signify what type of fabric or sewing you should use it with. This is at least a quarter inch to three eighths inch thick. It's very, very thick. And um, I, I feel mean, like I, I want, yeah, I have needles out by my sewing machine right now that I'm not even sure what That's kind exactly they are. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> I wish that I had had the older version. So all I could have is this like it would look like a, a, you know, tomato cushion. Yeah. From yeah. Sally's. Yeah, that's right. Using I'm looking it. to see if I have any stuck in here. I don't, mm -hmm. but oh my goodness. This is a great tool. So, so um, in the land of vintage buttons, um, we are right now in our new arrival section, um, we are posting and, and, and making available lots of different styles, colors. Um, we'll have tunnel shanks, we have glued on shanks, we have molded shanks, um, there's all kinds Glass of different buttons. ones. Glass buttons, metal buttons. Mm -hmm. um, these are about to go online and y'all they are super super cute. They really, so They look like orange cute. segments or I something really like that. Them. They're very they're very sweet. Well, uh, they almost have a flower design in the center. The sizes vary too. Um, it's They're really sweet. Yeah. So there y'all go. Um, you know back in the day Back in the long, long time ago day, um, I really was never that interested in um, buttons other than Mother of Pearl. Mother of Pearl, they, they were definitely my go-to, but I love all these other buttons now, and I'm using them in, in the garments. So. so it's true that we have at our um, hand a whole lot of different things to choose from, but when Sally has made different garments, mm -hmm. I mean, no matter the color or the look that we're going for, we have been able to find a vintage button that just perfectly Ooh, matches. Um, I just wanted to show y'all a couple different ways that things come in. So here is one of the styles. I mean, it's just like, it's almost like a shoe box kind of style with a, a lid, um, cardboard box. Mm -hmm. They have different uh, dividers in them that, that separate out the different styles. This is especially the way they come in if we buy old store stock that maybe has been stored in a... I'm like one time I bought all this stuff that was stored in a basement in, in um, Philadelphia. And that had been there for years and years and years. I, mean, I just happen to really love these. It, it's hard for me to, <laughs> it's hard for me to throw away the boxes, but I do throw away the boxes. So did you make these? I did. These are almost vintage. <laughs> Actually, what's the Etsy? Etsy says that vintage, like you can use that term if it's 20 years or older. So these are vintage. Years. Yeah. But, um, these are, uh, little like cameo style buttons and, um, I made them with, I'm, I put on Mother e of Pearl buttons. No. You didn't have to glue on these shanks? No. I, I, these are... Um, Tunnel shanks. They're decal. I, I use ceramic decals. I, I search and search and search everywhere for tiny ceramic decals. And like, here's a little bird with pine cones. So cute. Little pansies. Yeah. Those are sweet. And then... I like the cats. Yeah. Isn't that cute? And then I laid them all out, hundreds of them, and sprayed uh, coatings of polyurethane on them. And so... And so her son got hungry for some eggs, and he comes in the kitchen 
Like, how dare he use the kitchen? I did use that mixed up epoxy. <laughs> that That's true. Yeah. I did use uh -huh. that also. To glue in the detail. To, um, to, put, to put them over the top. Mm -hmm. These Some of these I use polyurethane spray. Yes, yes. But th those were, that's what made me think of it. I had on my kitchen island all these buttons laid out with that mixed up epoxy had poured over poured over the buttons and I had searched the whole town for the, for cooling racks that have little tiny square openings so the buttons wouldn't fall through and so I had them all lined up in there yeah he came in the kitchen to make scrambled eggs. Her son at like six years old comes and scrambles himself <laughs> some eggs. Decides he's going to get fancy and use some pepper. Pepper everywhere and the fan was on. No, he was what? He was at least middle school. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and I came in later and I thought, what are all, all these black specks all over my buttons that I had to throw away? You know, but you can't really get on somebody that when they fix their own breakfast, right? <laughs> Uh, so old time quality, you can find them right now. Um, they're a brand new product to us on our website under our new arrivals tab. So all kinds of different things are being loaded on there. Um, we do have two new arrival fabrics from Fabric Finders. And actually today we are supposed to be getting some more. This is the 100% cotton from Fabric Finders. And I really like this one. I, I like, like it when you put a color with it because I think it makes this brighter. It makes it really sweet. It does. So um, this is like a really light pastel. This is 2515. 2515 is new. And then what's this one? This one is 2518. So here's just to give you all an up close. It's a little print. I mean, they would be great for all mm -hmm. over dresses. Mm -hmm. um, paired with a peach color. I mean, it really, it becomes this really sweet floral. You had a pink one out here too, didn't I you? I like it as well. Oh, you didn't like peach. it? Oh, I was yeah. going to put it with that. Yeah, yeah. the pink. Pinky. So, um, Hannah's sundress, it is something that we have a limited numbers, number on. This is Collars Etc. Hannah's sundress. And um, it's really sweet. So, it's a sundress and pinafore. And I believe that it would make up beautifully in, in these types it of fabrics. Be, it would be very sweet. A good little yeah, I love summertime. I if, in love your uh, icy Wisconsin and Texas, <laughs> you might not be thinking about this style of uh, pattern right now. And 20 below in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So That's cute. What kind of uh, tea, tea are you drinking over there? Well, look at here, folks. Look at here. <laughs> we talked about pin cushions yesterday when Emma and I did our um, our question. We asked you what kind of pin cushions you use, and I really enjoyed your answers. Some of them were very touching to me because they came from your pin cushion. Your pin cushion maybe came from grandma, or maybe your child made it when they were tiny, and now they're forty or something like that. And you're like, every time. I use that pin cushion. I think of that. It's so sweet. We like to take a wig and chop off the wig <laughs> and use that as our pin cushion. So what, what do you call this stuff? That's a wool roving. And I just, I had some big long, I just stuck them in here. But my, I've, I've been collecting cups and saucers for a long, long, don't I have them everywhere in, in here? Because I want to make some of these. So maybe for Mother's Day, we'll have some ready. But I, I want to. We're on a wool felting mission. Yeah, that's to right. have a completed pin cushion. That's where you take all your loose haired mm -hmm. wool roving, and you have a process where you um, kind of stuff them all into a, yeah, a mold. Yeah, use that, that needle to mm -hmm. to make them to make it um, tight. Mm -hmm. And and I think like you can't you can hardly I tell. I mean, you can tell that it, it really is suitable for needles because right. even even just without um, going through the process of of putting them into a mold if they work well. So this little messy, my little messy one, well used, and I and now it's got all my cording tangled up in it. I, I kind of started with wanting to do something like this. And what I did was I had some wool coating and I cut a strip about four or three inches wide and then rolled it up and then hand stitched around it. And then I took wool roving and I used my needle felting needles and poked it all down in there and it made it nice and firm around the edges. And so you can take it, make a strip of, um, this is a suede uh, leather and with a piece of Velcro and actually sew that on. And of course I have everything to do it, but I haven't done it yet. I've made, I've made parts and pieces, but we, we'll just call this 
Today I'm going to show it. Becoming. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. It's, it's not coming soon. It's becoming. Yeah, it's become. But but I love beautiful old cups and saucers. I think they're wonderful. And I don't want anybody to hate me if I glue a cup to a saucer and it's like some amazing expensive thing from England or something like that. And so then I'm nervous and then I think, oh, I'm going to use the right glue. So I bought like 500 kinds of glue that aren't supposed you to yellow. You can do hot glue and then you can get it up. Then you can pull it off later. I know. And then I think, is that going to be messy? I don't want it to be messy. I want it to be pretty. And then do, am I going to need a little ribbon? Am I going to need, you know, it's like indecision. So these thoughts go into these products we offer, y'all. <laughs> it's not some easy process that's over here. That's right. But I have every color now that's made of wool roving. You can see it hanging on my wool wall. So, you know. Meg says she got one for her daughter-in-law. Um, her daughter's mother-in-law gave her a teacup pin cushion. She's going to send a picture later. Oh, Meg, good. So. Do it. Do it. Do yeah, it. Yeah, we would love to see that. And Sue says she's been saving cups and saucers for the same thing. Yeah. There you go. We're in the same so, boat here. So, um... I'm shifting gears. I wasn't going to talk, but you looked at me, so well, I was going to no, move. No, no, I'm, the, go ahead, but I'm going to show them a couple of these things. Go ahead, no, because that's okay. going to okay. take longer. Well, I wanted to show a couple of other um, pin cushions that we have. These are made with the Liberty Quilting Cottons, and there, there's an apple and a flower, and then this They're one cute. is wool. It's called the Wooly Bun Pin Cushion, and it's from the Gypsy Quilter, and this is all wool. And um, then, then, this is my little secret. I thought, what if I bought these wool dryer balls and cut them in half and put that down inside the cup and then you're not using all that expensive wool roving. I mean, can you just fit it in this cup? You can. Yeah, that would even... But then you want your, you want your stuff. No, I mean, you'd rove yeah, over it. Yeah. But... So anyway, they have these at Walmart, you know, and you can order my... And I, I ordered, like, I don't know how many different kinds from Amazon. Small ones, big ones, gray ones, white ones. And so I have it. I have everything. But how cute is that? That is cute. But the reason you use wool is we came to a standstill on Instagram. But anyway, the reason you use wool is because it lubricates the um, your pins. It lubricates your pins and needles. Our, our Instagram is kind of going crazy here. And so then somebody else suggested that they use that they use crushed up walnut shells in their um, pin cushions so today i ordered some of those on their so way I have every option and then the crushed up walnut shells help um just like emery does emery sand or what is it called emery sand um I'm not sure anyway um it it makes keeps your pins sharp and so we'll see about all of that so in the world of super cute, um, we have just gotten in some retractable measuring tapes. Oh, yeah. uh, these are a Riley Blake product and y'all, they are so, so cute. So um, they're just that typical size. They have that button that you push to um, retract it. Um, look at these, look at the different styles. <laughs> they are sweet. so cute. They're assorted. It. And so when we, when you place an order, we actually, you know, if if you request one and we have it in your note, if you request it in your notes, we'll we'll try and fill it the way you that you the way you want it. Somebody said, "I want sunbonnet suit." Yeah, please. they did ask for that, and they were able to get that. That's right. So um, that is a really fun thing. One thing that we will spoil, but we've already shown it already in case you watch our stories. Um, this is our newest um, magazine ad for our threads and saga and then also classic sewing. Um, this highlights the um, creative, man, I've lost my, what is it? It's the 90 minute pinafore by Creative Keepsakes. Yeah. Sorry. Here so um, Sally used, we have three different colorways of some floral prints with a soft yellow background. And um, this made up so stinking cute. It's got a Swiss embroidery edging that is, is put into the little, like, Look at this princess cute seams. We say yeah. this dress is as cute going as it is it coming. It is. It is. When, when we took a picture of the girls walking away and... And they're, they were so sweet together. I mean, you want that look whenever you're doing like a flower girl dress. You know, you want the, the flower girl to be pretty when she walks coming towards you. And then as she keeps going down the aisle, it's really such a yeah. sweet, sweet dress. I put a lot of, I put a lot of stuff underneath here too, because it made it full and poofy. We also um, extended the length of the dress to make it a maxi length. And um, it, it, it made the girls feel really yeah. fancy. <laughs> 
and um, we had just gotten in some of this. This is like an old-fashioned ecru color um, Swiss edging, but look how airy and beautiful it is. Mm -hmm. And then also I put a horsehair braid on the on the hem where the where the um, Swiss edging was connected to the. I made a I used a taffeta lining, and um, so several adaptations, swishy. but yeah. very easy ones. Yeah. Um, so if you're not familiar with our ads, we offer a 15% off co code that you can use um, with your online purchases. Um, and that can be found at the corner of all of our ads, whether it's in threads or classic sewing or the saga magazine. So it's a little buying incentive, I guess. I'll tell you what, when, um, when creative keepsakes was making her patterns, this one was what, I don't know. I think it was 1989 or something like that. She has amazing patterns. And so if you can imagine your own fabric, sometimes it's easier to look at a line drawing. We have sold so many of these patterns since we made the dresses and the girls wore them. They're darling. Her, her things are so well done. And her smocking plates are beautiful. Mm -hmm. We love her smocking plates. And so Creative Keepsakes, they've been around a long time. This is one of those classic patterns that you can use and use. And it is kind of a T-length, but and you might want to shorten it for today's garments. But it's a wonderful pattern to use. It comes in sizes. Um, what's that tiny size? We have the 3, 6, 12 months, and then the 2, 3, 4. And then this one has 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12. So it, it covers a lot of ages and sizes. Really cute. So Annette agrees. She says she loves the dresses and she's been following the story on that. Oh, good. Have you made the 90-minute pinafore? Did it take you 90 minutes or did you <laughs> do a thousand adaptations that, that took it longer than that? I couldn't do it in 90 minutes. Yeah. By the time I got done, it's like, I can sew pretty fast, but it took me longer than 90 minutes. Sane, you want to talk about that sure, fabric sure. you're clutching over there? So we were talking about the, the Sally fabric, um, and we always had it in ivory um, or soft white or ecru. And this time it came in in, we've got the white that we showed you, but look at this black. Oh my goodness, this is beautiful. And you dunked it in the water. Did I dunk I'm it like, in the water? Oh, is that it wet? wet? <laughs> oh, I swung it around and dunked it. Oh, maybe down here. So this is a double swatter. border. It's actually on a nylon netting with a cotton. I think it's polyester netting. I know, I'm, but I'm pretty sure it's a polyester netting because all that. I'm waiting for Emma to tell me because she's tap, know, tap, tapping over there. But it might not be right online. I think, I think it's. So I thought originally it was polyester, and I see that online it's not listed as nylon now. I think now. that's wrong. So there's a cotton embroidery. It's a very, very soft netting. It's not mm -hmm. a cotton netting. Um, and it has a gorgeous drape, and the yeah. quality of it is really beautiful. I mean, Put it over your arm like a... Like, can you imagine just a... Just a really beautiful robe with a with a bell shaped sleeve or something like that. I mean, you could you could do like a cardigan type thing. Well, Kristen said even a swimsuit cover up would be would, really be, would be really pretty. I'd need more covering than that because I wouldn't want anybody to see through. But <laughs> but this is beautiful. Yeah, it's this a very gorgeous quality. So we have it on in black as well as white and. Um, I just reordered because our first shipment in white almost gone. So it's really, really nice. So what you're looking at right here, this is our Liberty of London grab bag. So as you can see, there are a lot of different styles and sizes of the, the pieces of fabric in here. Um, what happens is when this comes in, whenever it's in the loom, it's actually, it has like this grab, the, when it's first started, it has the, a, a part of the mechanism is that it's pulled tight and grabbed and it creates these little puncture holes at the very start of the bolt or end, however you look at it. Um, so what we've done is we cut that off before sending out the first purchase piece of Liberty. Um, it's not just right at that area. There's actually a lot of usable space on each piece. Um, this whole assortment is around a half a yard of length that you would get if all of this created one fabric. Um, in this particular one, I'm not sure exactly how many colors there are, styles. 
So it's lots of usable pieces for covered okay. buttons or a little ruffle detail. Mm -hmm. um, you could use little tiny snippets for crazy quilting. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's there's all kinds of different applications. And if you're like us, you hold on to every single scrap of liberty. And so what we're doing is we're passing along our every single scrap of liberty. I think Chris, uh, Christy made six packets and some have sold today already. But they're they're really wonderful. So, and it's the full 54 inch width, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. So a half of yard of Liberty would run around fifty dollars. And yeah. um it's it's oh I'm sorry, it would be around twenty-four. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um this is uh, a deal at 15. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for little coordinates for your garments, um, this might be an option for you. And I've seen the cutest little tiny pin cushions made out of pieces of Liberty, little quilted pieces of Liberty. You can make little pin cushions. Also for doll clothes. Dolls, good right. call. Right. Definitely. So they're, they're really adorable. You're gonna love it. Bettina says, LOL, grab bag, I need. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's I definitely right. thought laugh out loud whenever yeah. you first read it. <laughs> All right. Should we look at some vintage patterns? Let's do it. <laughs> okay. I, I went into my garage and dug through patterns last night. Well, I mean, we we have some beautiful um, we have some beautiful organdy, Swiss organdy in colors. This gorgeous aqua turquoisey, turquoisey. And I mean, I pulled it down. We've got lots of colors. And then I found, I found some patterns, vintage patterns that could be, the organdy could be used for. Look at this little Vogue. This definitely is an organdy dress with pin tucks. And um, what got me going, Stephanie Dabbs from Little Bean Shop. That's right, isn't it? Little Bean Shop mm -hmm. she has made organdy dresses using our organdy. And I think, that's cute. Might have to do organdy. And... So this is a little dressy, like a little flower girl dress from Michelle, will you say, take the pictures of, of this? Will you so that we can share this picture? Yeah, and I can we'll, have, we'll, you'll have all the numbers and um, an up close look at the, the styles of them. Cute little one with a jacket. Somebody mentioned the jacket and Kristen and I were talking and look at all the this little square necks on these dresses from this time. I keep looking quickly for a date. But the, the little tiny square necks on these, I love that look. And whoop, they're kind of falling. This one's falling this one just out. Came out of this one. And um, with a square neck on a child, it doesn't have to be very wide or it'll fall off or gap. But um, even to give the effect of it. Yeah, I mean, it really does bit. show, even if it's like up near your collarbone, it, it right. really has a different um, overall effect. That's right. Because I cut a I cut a square neck out of a pattern that was a round neck one time, and I'm like, oh, I went. <laughs> you can see your belly button. I went way too big. Ooh. I went way too big. But I love this this little guy with a square neck front and back, and this cute little jacket. It just has a little cap sleeve, really sweet. And then we were talking about jabots, and so this has a little jabot made out of a ruffled fabric that comes around from the back of the neck and goes. We can go to the overhead on this one maybe. And comes comes down here to the to the front, and it's just one piece, and this is gathered up in the middle. And I mean, I think it's cute. This is a size six, and I keep thinking I might want to try that. That's sweet. We've got we've got a little gal that could possibly wear that. So anyway. so organdy fabric is a is a crisp. Um, mm -hmm. It's a bouncy kind of fabric. It really kind of stands out and holds its shape whenever it's sewn up. That's right. um, people always say, and we recommend that you want to have no um, uncovered <laughs> seams um, next to the child's body or, or your own. Um, so we have lots of different colorways. I mean, I think that from from white throughout the rainbow. I mean, we might be looking near. 12 different colorways yeah, of the solid. They're pretty. And so we've recently added this to our collection and it's, it's been, it's been really see. exciting. Swiss cotton organdy. Yep. Switzerland. They're, they're very beautiful. And um, Stephanie Dabbs has used our white organdy with the embroidered dots to make a little tulip sleeve on a dress and then a, um, a circle skirt. And whew, that's cute. Very cute. Mm -hmm. Very cute. So, in the world of um, pre-pleated bishops, so um, recently we have started offering pre-pleated bishops again. Um, so, what you get is actually, um, it's the pattern that's already cut out. Um, we've run it through the pleater for, it, it's 
it's smocked and pleated all the way around the neck. It's that raglan style, so it has the seam that comes out from the collarbone kind of towards the armpit. Um, and um, they're, they're already pre-coordinated with floss and then a recommended um, smocking plate for the design. Mm -hmm. So this is one of our newest ones. You can see it's a, a light pink dot on white. So it looks really sweet for little girls. Um, this is the, let's show you all this. This is our digital design of, of a similar look to what it will be mm -hmm. as its final product. So with our sewing kits, we say that you're getting all the parts and pieces to create the look. Um, if there's an ad adaptation that we've made, we talk about that adaptation so that you can make sure that you're willing to try that before you purchase the kit. Um, but these pre-pleated kits and bishops, we offer collars that are pre-pleated. Pre um, that's really hard to say a lot together. Huh. Um, what other option? We have yoke dresses that are pre-pleated and um, it's been really fun to add this new edition product to our website. So Sally's concoction is, <laughs> is she's loading it back up here on the table and we want to show y'all these these crisp white products that you wouldn't think could actually have any dirt removed from them. No, I can see. Oh, there's a difference I, I for can sure. See. I'm going to see if if uh, on the overhead they can probably see the dirt. The water is dirty. So here you go. Can you see it? Yeah, it's very cloudy. It's it's me. I almost feel like yeah. this uh, cross section. Let me hold it up front. Okay. Let me dump it on this table. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can see it right there, but there definitely is a tinge to the water. Yeah. These weren't horribly dirty to start with, and let's see, let's see how the little, how this little dress fared. I'm going to see if I can see. So after you've spent um, several days kind of babying these products, swirling them around, maybe dumping the water and re refilling it a couple times, um, you get to the next step, which is. So I can see there's still some, um, a little tiny bit of whatever she spilled on it, could have been chocolate. On, on there, but that whole in, in rusty, real life we would have left left this yeah. in here for for days, if that, not a week. That whole rusty water one. spot is gone. Isn't that wild? You know what? I'm going to leave this in to keep soaking, yeah. and I'll take because these. So will this, really I also be... feel like we should say this uh, particular garment that was a made garment um, has mother of pearl buttons on it, and we, without hesitation, put those into this oh, yeah. concoction. Yeah. So um, we've done that numerous times, plastic, mother of pearl. We're not saying that that's like a fail safe, they're going to be fine, but we've done this a lot with I mother think of that's pearl. Really safe. And even with the rinsing, I would dump my rinse water out and then re, re um, fill it with more, but already I can tell that these are really oh my goodness. We should have left a dirty one out. Oh, you know what? I wonder if I have, I don't have a dirty one. Nope. Yeah, I should have. Then in which case we'll say these are amazing <laughs> and the results are just wonderful. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. And then once I get these all rinsed, what I do is I roll them. I'm going to put it down here. I roll them up in a towel like this and then gets most of the moisture out and then I hang them over my little drying rack. And the ones that are poly cotton don't even need ironing. They're, they're just clean, clean and finished. They look great. And the ones that, like this will, I definitely will want to iron it. And, um, but it won't be horribly wrinkled mm -mm. once you, because you could wash it and hang it to dry. We, and it would be fine. We do offer if, um, let's say you've snagged a vintage garment and you are wanting to remove the lace to reuse it on a current garment, we offer a lace, um, what laundry do we call mat. it? A lace laundry mat mm -hmm. is what we call it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it has a, it's holes and it kind of is like an agitator kind of system. But um, you wrap the lace around this plastic tube and you can submerge it for however long for the laces. And so whenever mm -hmm. they unroll, they're almost completely flat and non-wrinkled. So, yeah, because it's easy to rinse too because the water can go through those holes mm -hmm. and you can rinse from both sides and just set, set it out to dry and mm -hmm. you unroll it and it looks pressed. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mary nice. Brantley has a question. Okay. She said, what do you think of using the retro clean on a 40 year old wedding dress? I think it should be fine. I think so. Yeah. I mean, really, we use it on 100 year old, um, like heirloom garments yeah. and stuff, you know, and, yeah. I, and cotton, I feel like from a hundred years ago, it's going to be cotton, but, um, that might be the only thing that I would mm -hmm. say. You probably want to test a little tiny piece of maybe the underneath of the dress so that I know there are certain, um, cleaning supplies that hand that 
that um, don't do well with silk, mm -hmm. that they can turn silk a little bit mm -hmm. like golden yellow. Mm -hmm. That draws out the color that or something. happened to me one time. <clears throat> but um, but this, I, I've used it, I use it on a, the poly cotton, I use it on cotton, mm -hmm. use it on linen. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, actually um, one of the laces we just showed y'all is a poly cotton blend, mm -hmm. which we've done and really successfully. Clean. It so, didn't ruin that, that garment or piece. I don't know about silk, you know, if, but sodium perborate is the active ingredient. And so if you know the, the fiber con content of your garment, you can look up and say, see, mm -hmm. will this work with that fiber content? She says she'll try it and get back with you. Good. I like that. <laughs> so um, yesterday we showed y'all a video of a few of the hand work books that we carry. Um, I find it more helpful to me, and even though um, I'm in a generation that grew up with computers and the internet, I still like to hold a book to learn. Mm -hmm. And so these are a few that we have carried for as long as they've been available, and that's the Genie B's Heirloom Embroidery Design and Stitches. Um, so there's all kinds of tips and techniques and, and ways to improve your handwork. Um, and beautiful, beautiful projects and designs. Definitely. Yeah. So then there are the Elliman Karn. Um, she has both the picture smocking and the English smocking um, different books for y'all. I thought it was so interesting. Do you want, do you want to talk about well, these? I mean, I, what I love about this is that they, they include, I mean, not just the smocking technique, but smocking plates or patterns. And one of them, I think it's the first one on English smocking, has the whole monogram of the yes. every every letter of the alphabet. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, what was so interesting to me is Gail Doan. Um, Y'all were talking about how Gail Doan is <clears throat> some of your favorite contents for mm -hmm. book learning, which um, these are two of her classes that she offers at gaildoan.com. What was so cool about the classes is that the um, instructional that she uses to walk you through the class, we we downloaded, printed, and spiral bound because of um, the Sunny Sewist or Sunny Sewist on Instagram. Y'all, these things make up beautifully as um, books that you can add <laughs> to do. your library. And then again, the pictures, the demonstrations, the step-by-step, -step, I mean, mm -hmm. it's phenomenal. So um, these are also two things that we would say. Y'all go check out galedone.com. And, and if you haven't taken these classes... You can sign up for these classes, and part of the class is that you is receive this, book. this. Yeah. And and now you'll have to print it yourself or get it printed. We sent it to Office Depot and had it printed mm -hmm. and bound. So completely worth it. Huge. Yeah. I mean, what is it? I don't even I mean, know. It's all ninety six pages yeah. for this uh, smocking. The 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 photography is wonderful. You can follow it so easily. I mean, look at this. Just so so excellent. Very cool. Yeah. So we've got some great talent in um, in our little world of heirloom sewing. Um, you can see it in the classic uh, sewing magazine, and just like the new one that's that's just out, Cheryl Clapp. And we're so thankful to have people that that have contributed to that magazine that have been here on Gab and Gush, and um, we hope we hope that continues because it's really been fun. It's been fun to uh, have have them be introduced to everybody because you don't always get a chance to, some some of them we never had a chance to talk to them ourselves and so we've gotten to make um, great new friends and it's been very fun y'all definitely yeah. we've got a question on instagram uh so a corley asked what pattern and fabric was used for the beige dress hanging behind you and i'm thinking that it's the pink dress it's coming up a little bit so that is an, more than likely, it's an old-fashioned baby pattern. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is. Um, this is the simple, the sweet and simple day gown. Um, there have been some adaptations made with the, the lace fancy band type techniques that were put onto the bodice. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually, it's, it's really like a high yoke was created due to the adaptation. Um, it's an A-line styled garment that was... Um, is it still in print? We do it have is? this. Good, yeah, good. we have this pattern. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, the the talented um, and and late Mrs. Dot created this dress, and y'all, the things that she could do with an ordinary pattern yeah. and and make it look like it's its own pattern, mm -hmm. it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, also, I don't know if y'all saw from it being in the background, she added um some insertion into the puff sleeve, and so it comes out from from one point and angles down into like almost like a triangle effect, but it opened up this little spot for her to do embroidery. So gorgeous. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. 
and she does love to put there she did she loved to put entredeau in the seams this is a a double entredeau tiny tiny double entredeau we can go to over i mean even to the shoulder seam yeah but it adds yep. such such personality can, can you see that yeah you can see that here's here's that little sleeve how beautiful right that's gorgeous there it is and then all the way up into the sleeve mm -hmm. or armband is entredeau and here again, these the sweet little patterns of Jeannie Baumeister's have um, like a little, uh, I, I mean, a comfort pleat in the back. It tucks it up here, but it gives a little more room in the bottom of the dress. I love that. Does she have it under the arm? Sometimes <laughs> the vintage patterns have that little mm -hmm. box like pleat under, yeah, 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 under the arm also. And it's mm -hmm. very, very pretty. Very pretty. Okay, so um, two more tiny arrivals. Y'all, these really remind me of Nashville cotton prints is what I keep thinking when I see them. They're a tiny, sweet floral. They are. They're a soft um, ivory, soft white background. Um, as you can see, it's just the tiniest scale here. And the colors are really beautiful. So it's a scattered flower, and they have um, darker and lighter colors in them, mm -hmm. and this would be super sweet. It's a 45-inch. Um, it's really like in the quilting cotton world, um, and they are from Sevenberry, so very pretty. But it's not it, It's not rough. No, It no. feels almost more like a poplin, doesn't it? It's yeah. in that world. Yeah, this is very cute. Mm -hmm. Good for Patty Robinson and her doll clothes. <laughs> right, Patty? Patty Robinson. Um Pidget, what, Pidget, Pidget dolls? for dolls? Pidget for dolls. Yep. Pidget for dolls. Yeah. All, All right. right. So we announced in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be offering um, um, Cheryl Clapp's embroidered front, um, the magazine, and also the kit to create the, the look. Um, this week, we have, we have weekly giveaway here, here at Farmhouse. We list the video on Thursday. We ask you to do a couple things, and then we draw a name here on Friday. So this one, um, Emma and I found some, we have some notions in here, some scissors, tiny embroidery scissors. Here's a piece of what we call the Sally fabric. And um, there's a vintage gingham. There's a piece of pretty little eyelet, um, a dinosaur fabric and some ribbon. And so it's, it's a cute little, it's a cute little giveaway. So who do we have, Kristen? All right, this week, I'm gonna go for the bottom of the barrel. All right, we have, Opie Watson. I have pin cushions everywhere around the house. <laughs> Magnet, embroidered wool, tomato. She's got them all. Good. All right. Have you made your own teacup pin cushion yeah. though? <laughs> Congratulations. And we will see y'all back here next week. Um, we are hosting Regina Karish of Come Sew With Me. And she has a really exciting um, lineup of dresses where she's used um, the applique for kids.com. Um, yeah, color overlays. Color overlays. It's going to be oh, beautiful. she has been busy. You know how Regina can knock out uh, things, you know, like, let's do five today. Let's do ten tomorrow. It'll be an impressing yeah. haul, I'm yeah. sure. So every, every inch of this back wall will be filled with Regina's If not, face. we'll put up our dresses yeah, so that right. it doesn't make her look like she didn't do anything. <laughs> We're excited to have Regina. She's one of our, our great friends here at Farmhouse, and um, we are excited to host her next Friday here on Gavin Gush. All right. Thank you, everybody. my favorite part where Michelle can't mm -hmm. get out of it. <laughs>